Hi, I'm Zachary Farnell. Thank you very much for joining me for another edition of your Timberlane weather update. Now, the long-term Timberlane weather update as on Monday and Tuesday. Every week, I'm expecting to release a short form weather update on the general overview of the weekend and the following days to come to kind of give us a stopgap in between these Thursday segments that I expect to continue all the way through the rest of this school year. If you wish to follow those, find them on the Instagram page for Timberlane and expect those to be released on their Instagram Reels section as they will be under 90 seconds for me to explain the weekend, that day, and the following days. So that will be next Monday or Tuesday and any week following that, it will be the Monday or Tuesday, whichever one is easiest. In the meantime, we've been dealing with some absolutely frigid temperatures over the last couple of days and it's just like I forecasted last week, just as we expected expected, we saw the temperatures fall off, but they stayed down much lower than what we've been seeing in the last couple of forecasts. I mentioned the broken record idea where just kind of over and over and over we saw a late week warm up into the 70s, maybe even 80s. We finally saw that pattern die down and even though over the next couple of days and the weekend temperatures may reach into the low 60s, it's not nearly what we saw earlier the last couple of weeks into early November and late October where those temperatures were easily reaching the 80 degree range. For us right now, uh, excuse me, for us on Wednesday, these are yesterday's temperatures, I mentioned that biting cold and it's been entrenched in here for the last couple of days. This is the daytime highs for Wednesday. I mean, maybe reaching 45 for the district. Up north into Maine, you barely even broke freezing for your daily high temperature on Wednesday. We do see a little bit of heat across the Midwest that's kind of trapped in with some rain in a system that's eventually going to push its way out to the Atlantic. And behind that, a little bit of a high pressure system expected to transfer that heat to our area. But we don't see that yet as we get towards last night, Wednesday night, Thursday morning, however you want to frame it, it was absolutely frigid. Barely um, breaking 20 degrees in towards some of the district overnight, getting down just about that 20 degree range for much of the area, easily into the freezing range. Some roads were certainly feeling the impacts of that. And again, I mentioned that high pressure system, kind of building a little bit of a heat dome overnight, temperatures really only dropping into the 50s for parts of Indiana. That will begin to push its way towards us. Even still, it has not reached us yet. As of the time of recording this right now, daytime highs on Thursdays only reached into 45 to maybe 47 as you get towards the coast. But really, all of New England, very little variability, just in towards those 40 degree range. Um, and although it did warm up a little bit from yesterday, it's generally been very chilly throughout much of the early morning and late evening hours with the midday um, time frame getting a little bit more bearable in towards the mid 40s. Again, I mentioned that heat finally going to begin to move over towards our area tonight and into tomorrow. But I want to point out something interesting I noticed on this map. I mentioned last week we're going to see a pretty large uh, snowstorm moving in towards much of the um, Colorado Rocky area and you can see the heat building in now after that storm we've seen a southerly flow move in and predominate across the plains bringing those 70 degree temperatures into this area um, for the last couple of days but you've seen in towards this area where the snow fell southern Colorado northern New Mexico you can see where the snow fell because it's just a whole lot colder uh, maybe 30 degrees colder than the surrounding areas and I thought that this was absolutely fascinating and I wanted to prove something. If you could see it on the temperature map, can you see it on satellite? Let's take a look from space and indeed you can. It's right there. All of this area, not actually clouds at all. That's up to two feet of snow that fell south of Denver, north of Albuquerque. It's still been in there even though the temperatures across much of the plains, again I mentioned, into the 70s. So although they do cool down the air, still it's been much above freezing and for multiple days the snow has been melting and it's still on satellite right now just kind of giving you an idea of just how powerful that last storm was for them cooling down temperatures still around 40 degrees when they should be around 70. Much of the east coast is engulfed in this kind of messy array of clouds across the Midwest and pushing out towards the East Coast. For us in the Northeast and New England especially, pretty clear day today, not a whole lot of clouds. They literally fizzled out as they reached our area all day. I watched them dissipate as soon as they crossed the Massachusetts border. But 
You can see more interesting on more interestingly on satellite for us it's already dark. This is as of 3:30 p.m. the satellite it's already registering the sun going down across the area and sunsets around 4:15 now. So you're seeing the winter really begin to take over in this area. This general cloudiness associated with a low pressure system in here you're going to see that on Friday on the fronts map down here pushing out off the coast of um, North Carolina and Virginia kind of sitting over this area right in here. Some lingering rain and showers associated with it towards the uh, Carolinas and Virginia but really not expected to make a big impact. It would have if not for this uh, low pressure system up to the north, up in our area. This one's kind of retrograding, moving against where you'd expect it to normally be going. You'd, typically, the systems move out uh, west, uh, from west to east. They move this way. This one's moving east to west, moving in towards Maine, giving some freezing rain across that area over much of the day tomorrow. However, as it sits up to the north, it's beginning to lose its strength, its impact on us on Saturday, even though it's closer to us now, very little. Maybe some rain showers over northern New England, not expecting a whole lot out of it. And it ends up cementing itself in here uh, strong enough even while fizzling out to keep this storm away from moving up the coast and becoming a nor'easter. That was a real possibility with this one, but it ends up instead moving out into the Atlantic Ocean. We don't even have it on our front map on Saturday. It's so non-important at this point. And again, you see this big time high pressure system. I mentioned it kind of bringing some warmth across the Midwest of the country. It will begin to move into our area and do the same thing on Saturday. Continuing to see that on Sunday now. Built in a little bit, a little bit more south maybe, but Still seeing that flow moving into our area, dragging up the warmth, and that's why you're seeing 60 degrees for the weekend. Let's break down exactly what we can see on the weekend um, over the next couple of days, especially, again, we right now are sitting around 45 degrees as a quick reminder. So. Even though it is sunny, it's been pretty cool and we expect the sunny pattern to continue through much of the weekend even as the temperatures begin to warm up. Tomorrow, Friday, mid 50s and as we get towards much of the weekend, we see those low temperatures almost reach 40 as the highs nearly reach 60. As the beginning of next week rolls around, we see a little bit more of a cloudy pattern and just watch the temperatures slowly continue to decline. Maybe high to mid 50s on Monday, mid 50s on Tuesday. Here's your extended forecast, 10 day now. Wednesday, back into those mid 50s. Thursday, Friday, it's cloudy, it's showery. A general system of rain has moved into the area, but we continue to see those temperatures steadily drop. By the time we reach next Sunday, it'll probably be around the mid to upper 40s and probably clearing out once again, bringing us more cool fall days over the next couple of days, an extended time period after that. For now, we'll have to wait until our uh, short-term forecast on next Monday or Tuesday to see exactly how the weekend ended up panning out, just how warm it is next Monday and Tuesday. For now, I'm Zachary Farnell. Thank you very much for joining me for another edition of your Timberland Weather Update. We are sadly not looking at much rain in the short-term forecast, even though much of Massachusetts has been experiencing a wildfire season they have not seen in years. If you may have checked on the news recently, you can see fires have been burning across areas like uh, Lynn and areas like Salem, Massachusetts. Those areas have been see seeing some wildfires that have shut down highways, schools, apartment buildings, and homes have all had to be evacuated in advance with those. So we're hoping that next week those showers with an associated system with it will bring us some rain finally. But according to my count, it's been about two straight weeks of red flag warnings for a high fire danger for the uh, county in Massachusetts just south of us. So please be alert, be aware, make sure that you are not burning unsafely as we are dealing with an unprecedented fire risk over the next extended week or two. So please keep that in mind as we look forward towards maybe bonfires um, on Saturday and Sunday. It'll certainly be warm enough to get back outside and have some outdoor activities. So I'm Zachary Farnell. Thank you very much for joining me. For now, signing off.